When you partially close a trade with MetaTrader, it will close the original trade for the number of partial lots and then open another trade for the remaining lots. Partially closing the trade is not difficult, but there is no simple function to return the order number of that new replacement trade. In this video, I'll show you how to write a function that will not only partially close a trade, but also return the number of that replacement trade. Now I've already set up my demonstration account here with four trades opened. Uh, they're all of size 0.2 lots uh, and they're all on the same currency pair and the prices have been moving around very slowly but you can see that they are different open prices. To manually partially close is easy enough. I can just right click on here, modify the order, go to instant execution and I can close 0.01 lots execute that and now you can see that trade has disappeared and there's a new trade in here for 0.19 lots so that's easy enough to do now how do we do that in code so i'll step across to the code and we'll use these others as the example now i'm demonstrating this in a script because that's the easiest way to do it um, the first script i have here will just do the partial close and then we'll move on to the more complex problems of how to track what happens after that. Uh, I've got one input, the ticket to close, so I'll be able to choose the ticket that I want to close in the input box when I run the script. Um, and I've included STD error and STD lib so that I can display errors in case something doesn't work. Then all I'm doing, I'm setting a single variable, lots to close. I'm going to close 0.01. You might have this as an input or it might be determined by your expert. I'm just going to close 0.01 lots. And I've put all of the logic for this into a single function called partial close. So I'm just passing in the ticket number I want to close and the number of lots. So then here is the partial close, taking the ticket number and the lots to close. I'm copying lots to close into another variable because I'm going to compare that to the size of the trade just in case it's too big. Uh, at 0.01 I won't have a problem, but in real life you might. First thing to do is to select that order. So I'm doing an order select with the ticket number and select by ticket. And then I'm doing a check on the order close time because there's no point in trying to close an order that's already closed. If the order is still open, then the close time is going to be zero. I probably should also have checks here to make sure that it's not a buy stop or a sell stop or buy limit or sell limit, but uh, I'll leave you to worry about those. And then here's my test. If order lots are less than the number of lots that were requested, so I set that here, uh, then I'm updating lots to be just the number of order lots and that way we'll just close the entire order. Then I've got a simple print statement that tells me which ticket number we're about to close, the number of lots we're going to close, and the price that that order was opened at. And then partial close is no more complex than a standard order close. You just pass in the number of lots. So that's it. It's the current ticket number, lots to be closed, and the order close price, which I'm getting from the order. I'm putting zero slippage here because I'm not too worried for this demonstration. And after that, if that was successful, got the if statement here. I'm doing a print format saying that we partially closed that ticket. If it failed, then I'm getting the error number from get last error and I'm getting the error description, which is why I included the STD error and STD lib so that I can get a description from the error number. Uh, and then I'm just printing that we failed to close the ticket and showing the error number and the error description. So now that we've worked through the code of that partial close, I'll just compile it. No errors there. And we'll go over to my list of tickets. And I'm going to close this 593 order. Or partially close this 593 order. So I'll run partial close one. The inputs here. Now that 593 order has gone. And I have a new order here, 309. So it has done the partial close correctly. So that's the simple case of just partially closing the order and we don't care about it after that. Next, we'll move on to see how we can find the order that's created from that. Now I have another script. This is my partial close number two script and this has a return of the new ticket number. Now I have seen um, 
a lot of forum posts and questions and some people even suggesting that this is the next ticket number after the one that's been closed. That would only be true if you're running inside the strategy tester and you don't open any other trades because the strategy tester is just allocating numbers sequentially. In reality, this is going to be the next ticket number issued by your broker and it could have nothing to do with the ticket number that you've just closed. So it's important to get this right if you care at all about that ticket that you've just created. Uh, the beginning of the script is the same, still inputting a ticket number to close, still going to close 0.01 lots, but I've changed the partial close now and it's going to return the new ticket number. And then after that, I'm doing an order select using that new ticket number. Um, and I'm ignoring the possibility that that might fail. It's only for the demonstration. And I'm doing the order select so that I can then print this new ticket is and show the new order number, the new order lots and the order open price. So the modified partial close function uh, returns an integer, which will be the ticket number, still taking the current ticket and the number of lots to close. And I'm still going to save lots to close so that I don't close too many. Still doing an order select, the same as before, and still checking that the order is not already closed. So by the time I get to this point, I know that I'm ready to partially close this order. What I need to do is store a list of all of the existing tickets that I have. So I'm creating an array of open tickets, that's an integer array, and then I'm calling this function load open tickets, passing in that array. Let's just scroll down to that now. So here's load open tickets. So I'm receiving an array of open tickets using the ampersand there because I'm passing an array in here. Uh, and then a fairly simple loop. I'm selecting the number of orders, int count equals orders total. Then I'm resizing this open tickets to be just the right size for the number of orders that we have. And then just to make sure in case there are errors, I'm going to initialize all the elements of that open tickets array to a zero, initializing them starting at position zero for the number of elements in the array and the initialized value is zero. And then the usual loop, uh, I'm doing a count backwards loop here, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then I'm simply saying if I can select using the select by position in this case and selecting mode trades, then I'm putting that order ticket into that element of the array. So that will fill up the array with all of the ticket numbers that we currently have open. And then because I'm going to want to search that array later, I'm just running an array sort on that to get the tickets in order. So now once I have that list of open tickets that are current, um, I'm doing the same logic as before, updating lots if I've tried to close too many. I'm printing here that I'm about to close, do a partial close on that order ticket number for the number of lots and open price. The same condition, if I'm able to do a partial close for that number of lots, then I'm going to print that the partial close was successful. But now I've added this new line where I'm going to return the result of a, another function called find new ticket. So let's look at find new ticket now. So in find new ticket, I'm passing in the list of open tickets that I have. It's a good idea to call refresh rates because we've just done some transactions, so I'm doing that. Uh, again, getting the number of orders that we have in total. I'm declaring this pos variable. This is going to be the position of the new order if we find one. The same count down then through our total list of orders. And then I'm saying if the order select is successful, which you should always do after you do an order select, then the position, and I'm using the array B search. So I'm searching the open tickets array for the order ticket number that I've just selected. And all I'm saying then is if I don't find this new ticket number, uh, the array B search will return the nearest position in the array. It won't return an error if it doesn't find something. So once I've got a position in the array, I have to compare the value of that element in the array, the open tickets position number, with the actual order ticket that I've searched for. So if array B search hasn't been able to find the order ticket exactly, then these two will not match, and therefore I know that I've found a brand new ticket, and I will simply return that order ticket. So this will be the new ticket 
after we have partially closed a deal. Uh, and just in case I don't find any new tickets, I'll return zero. Now, just as we did for partial close one, I'll compile that. And then I'll go back to the terminal and run this code so that we can see it returning the new order number. Now I've cleared the experts log. Here looking at my trades, I'm going to close this 685 trade this time. So I'm running partial close two. Now that 685 trade has gone and we've got a new trade 8771. If I go to experts where I've been logging the activity, here we're trying to close 685. There's the message we're about to close 0.01 lots. We closed 685 and then we got the new ticket 8771 with lots 0.19 at the same price as the original. So that's worked and we've got the new ticket number back. I'll just take a moment here to mention because some people have said that you can read the comment for this. And it's true that here in the comments, it is showing the new ticket number or rather showing the old ticket number against the new one. I don't rely on this. Uh, most brokers will do this, but brokers can simply change those comments if they feel like it. Uh, and it might be for any number of reasons. So I would not rely on monitoring the comments to find the link between old and new ticket. But now that we've shown how to find that new ticket, I just want to add some additional checking in there because that new ticket may have been created by another expert advisor running somewhere else, maybe even on a different virtual machine somewhere. So we want to add some additional checking to make sure that it's related to the order that we've just closed. Now I have another script here, um, partial close three. And this will also return the ticket number and I've added some tests. So let's skip through everything that's the same. We're the same all the way down here, still calling it and still reporting the ticket number. In the partial close though, I'm setting up these three variables, symbol, type and price, which I'm getting from that order. And I'm filling them in here after I've done the order select so I can get that, those values for the current order. When I call load open tickets, then I'm passing those three values. So let's see how that's changed the load open tickets function. Getting these three additional values. I still have to declare the array for the total size because I really don't know how many I'm going to find that match that symbol type and price. Um, and I could dynamically resize the array every time I find a new one, but it's just easier to array site, resize it once because I am filling in all the values with zero. So I'm not going to have problems with the extra elements. But then as I go through the loop, I've now added this conditional statement. So for each order that I select, the symbol, type and price have to match the values passed in. So this way I'm only going to build up a list of trades that match these three. Other than that, the load open tickets is the same as it was before. But then I also pass those three values into find new ticket. And this is why I saved the values rather than pass in the function names to this load open tickets because I need these values to be held constant for the time I call this find new ticket. So then in find new ticket and we'll see how that's changed. I'm passing the symbol type and price. Uh, I'm still calling refresh rates and I've got this same condition that I'm only looking at new trades that have the same symbol type and open price. So this will limit the number of possibilities of trades that I can find. And in fact, unless the current market price is exactly where it was when this trade was originally opened, you shouldn't get a new trade with the open price the same. Once I've done that, I know that any trades that I find in this new, tra new trade search will have to be for the same symbol type and price. So the possibility of finding a new trade that exactly matches those is very small. And if you want to be even more careful, you can add more values in here. Uh, if it's an expert advisor, you might want to pass in the magic number, for example. Uh, any number of things you might want to add here. Just make sure they are things that will be the same from the original trade to the modified trade. 
I'm not going to demonstrate that because I'm going to take one step further and then we'll demonstrate the final result. So here I have partial close four, added tests and a retry. Now the retry is because if the broker is busy, uh, then when you do that partial close, you may not get the new trade back immediately. So the change this has made, everything here is the same symbol type and price. I'm loading the open tickets, no change there. But when I call this find new ticket, I'm passing in a retry count. So I've set a variable here, retry count of five. Now, if we go down to the find new ticket, there's the retry count. And I'm simply building that inside a loop um, for retry equals zero, as long as retry is less than the count and incrementing retry. If this is not the first loop, so if retry is greater than zero, I'm sleeping for a second. Now you may want to modify that. You might want to pass it in as a variable. I've just built it in here for the demonstration. So I'm sleeping for one second, then refreshing the rates and then going through the same loop. Now, the reason I've built this into a loop is because as soon as I find a trade that doesn't match, I'm going to exit this function anyway. So I don't really need to add extra conditions here saying, have I found the result or not? I can just run through this loop. And if I do go through all five retries, then it will return zero and I haven't found it. Uh, you may want to increase the retry count. You might want to increase the sleep time, decrease it. But this will mean that I'm coping for at least five seconds with the broker not immediately returning the new trade. And it means that I'm checking the symbol, the type and the price. Uh, this is quite robust then in terms of finding that new trade. So we will try this one out. I'll just compile that. And it's difficult to show the retry because I've never had a problem with this, but I've built it in here just in case. So let's go to the trades and see what happens. Okay, I'm here. I have one last trade at point two. I'm going to execute this partial close four. So I'm closing trade 715 or partially closing trade 715. And now we can see trade 715 is gone. I have this new trade 148. If I go to the experts tab, I can see there it is. Trade 148 has been opened for 0.19 lots at 117739, which was the original price of the trade at 0.2 lots. So that has successfully partially closed one trade, opened another and returned this ticket number to me, showing the open price for that trade. If you found this useful, then please click the like button. That helps us a lot. Um, and if you'd like to see more of these videos, then click the subscribe button. And if you click the bell icon, then you will get a notification every time we post something new so you don't miss any of these. Until the next time, thank you for watching.